Hello, and welcome to the channel. It's puzzle time again with a new case with Sudoku Sleuth. Now, today's case is Bad Wiring Diagram by Tingo. And if any of you viewers are electricians out there, I'm sure you take a look at some of these green lines and you can indeed confirm that looks like bad wiring all over that can only result in a short circuit and tears. Um, as usual, for those of you that have been to the channel before, we are solving Sudoku variants, meaning they're Sudoku puzzles with a twist that allows us to fill in a grid that's completely devoid of any numbers. Tingo, of course, gave us zero digits to start. There are no digits anywhere to be seen in this grid. So it's really going to be up to us to use all the crumbs of clues that Tingo's placed for us to solve this case. Now, let's take a look at the rules for today's puzzle. It indeed looks very colorful. So normal Sudoku rules apply. That means we need to place a digit one through nine in every row, column, and box in the grid. Green lines are German whispers, and we've seen these before on the channel, where essentially each adjacent cell would have to be of different polarity. So this can be from the digits one, two, three, and four. Um, and therefore, the next one would be from the digits six, seven, eight, or nine. And notice, because they need to be five away, you cannot place five anywhere on a green line in today's puzzle. Next, we have Remband lines are consecutive in any order. I think this is the first time we've actually had Remband lines on the puzzle. So if you, you know, I'm, I'm actually almost starting to solve it as I'm about to explain it. So we've got here what is a seven digit Remband line or seven cell. So essentially you could have the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or the digits three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, but it doesn't matter if they are consecutive, as in they don't have to go in a particular order, but you need to make sure that they are contiguous along this line. Let's see, what else do we have? Cells joined by white dots are consecutive in value. Uh, we've got quite a few of them peppered throughout this grid today. Not all white dots are given, so no negative constraint. Cells joined by a V sum to five, and we've got a pattern here that I'm sure is going to be on the flow of solving today's case. Cells with an X, sum to 10. And then lastly, we have gray lines are palindromes, and I believe that's the first time we've also seen those on the channel. So essentially, you know, this time we've got only two cell palindromes, so it means this cell is the same as this cell. But palindromes are often a bit longer, so it would mean this cell, for example, would be the same as that. This one would be the same as that. You need to be able to read them the same forwards and backwards. And that's all the rules that we have for today. Uh, you can play along in today's puzzle. Link in the description down below. And with that said, let's get started. Let me restart the clock here and get going. Now, when I was explaining the rules, I was immediately drawn to these Remban lines because these digits have to contain the number nine. Since this is a V and they need to sum up to five, clearly nine would have to be coupled with a minus four, which is not possible. So nine doesn't go in here, nine doesn't go in here. Nine must be on this Remban line. Therefore, all the digits that we have in here, and indeed, for all of these have to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that leaves us with the following digits that are not from that set, and they are one, two, and to add up to a five, they're from the set three, four. Yeah, and you can immediately see the next step here. So as you take a look at the row here, which essentially, if I color all of these blue, as I traditionally do on German Whispers puzzles, you can see immediately that all the cells that are German Whispers 
in the following spots have to be large digits because all the small digits are gone in this row, in this column, and indeed in that column, meaning where the German whispers line intersects these rows and columns, this would have to be a large cell. So that's large, large. A little bit more obvious here since we already had some. And the rest are blue, meaning they are small digits. So this has to be from three or four. This has to be from one or two. These are one or two. And that is from one or two. So let's take a look at, um, yeah, this has to be a small digit given, you know, this is adding up to a 10. So this is also one or two because three fours are gone. This is the other one or two, meaning it's joined with an eight or nine. If you think about a German whisper that has a three, if it's five digits or more away, the minimum number this can be is eight or nine. So that's eight, nine, and therefore these two are six, seven. In the middle in here, between a one, two, this, the, it can't be a six because six would have to be joined by two ones on either side, and that's not possible on the same row. So seven, eight, or nine. And that's six, seven, eight, or nine. Just taking a look around the puzzle to see what else is left. So um, row five, we've got all the large digits now. So these digits have to be low. These digits have to be high. These two have to be high because they're on the palindrome. So whatever this digit is, it's the same here and the same here. Now, this has to be the set one, two, three, because if we try and make this a four, both of these two cells that are connected to it would have to be nines. So that's not four, that's one, two, or three. That's a four, five pair to complete the row. Don't know the order of that yet. Um, five cannot be in either of these cells now, but five can still be in one of two spots. So that's still fairly open. Three, four cannot go in this box. So that's the remaining three, four. And now we have one of five, six, or seven. That's the five. Right, fairly obvious. The five has to go in here because it's not gonna go in a German whispers line. So that's not five. That is the five. And finally, we've got our first digit five minutes into today's soul. Let's keep going. So one or two are gone. Three, four cannot be in here because it's gone from the column. So three, four has to be somewhere in here. So we're left with a blue five and a red, meaning this is red as well. Don't know which one it is. This has to be red as well. And again, we don't know which one it is. Uh, three, four in the column means this is the five, this is the four, and we've got more digits that are quickly appearing. We still need a one, two, and three. The three has to be in here. And that's the one, two. We can probably do the opposite of this for a second. So one, two, and three 
because we have to avoid a four. Now, equally on the red hand red side, we have to avoid a six because if we try again a six in here, both of these would have to be a double one. So that's seven, eight, nine. And therefore, that's not six because it's joined by the palindrome. That is six. That's seven. That's six, seven. That's an eight, nine pair. We've got a six somewhere in here. And then we need an eight, nine pair in the column to complete it. Therefore, this is the only remaining five in here. That's another eight, nine pair in the column. That's got to be six or seven. That's the five. That's the other six or seven. So the five goes on here. Um, you can see across this row eliminates it. So if you look at these croquis dots, it pretty much says this is, it's almost acting like a thermometer. They have to be contiguous digits. So if five has to be in this row, it can't be in here because it needs to be surrounded by a four and six, and four is not available in this box. So six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight, nine, eight, not eight. Um, therefore, this is eight. Essentially, we've got an odd digit with a crop key dot. It must join an even digit to be one away. So that is the eight. Um, looking at the eights, we can just finish this one off. And we've almost got all the eights now. Um, so there's an eight in here, that's a nine. That must be joined with, it doesn't have to be joined with a four. Unfortunately, both options are still available. But this eight does tell us this has to be the three, two, one, four. Three, two, one, four. This can't be a four because it would require two nines. So that has to be the three. That's the four. Four, one, two, three. I'm sure I've missed some other digits I can probably place at this point. Um, but that's a fantastic run of digits to complete. Um, let's see what else we can do. So we've got a run in here that includes both a five and a nine. So we know this cell has to be one of five or nine. And it's either heading nine, well, I think that tells us already, because it can't be nine, eight, seven, because that would put the eight in here, which conflicts. So nine is not in there, nine is in here. This five tells us the order, so that's five, seven. Did I make a mistake there? So the eight is already there. We needed to place five, six, seven. That's correct. That's a nine. Yeah. And we'll color that. That tells us the order in here. So that's an eight, two, one, nine, two. One, four, one, two, three, and we've nearly placed all the digits, all the low digits in the grid. So we still need a three, four in here, joined with one of six or seven, that's not true, with a nine. So that's a three, four, nine set. This is a seven. That's a one, two, eight set. That's not eight. 
and these digits are from 5, 6, or 7. And if you take a look at the palindrome now, we've got a 7, 8, 9 in the box, or more specifically, we've got 7 already placed in the box in this triplet. So 7 cannot reoccur, which would mean this they cannot be on these palindromes here. So that's the 7. These are not 7. That's the 5, 6 pair in here. And that's the last digit, which would be a 4. Still need to place 3, 4 down here with a 5. So 3, 4, 5 with a 6. And 9, 7. That's not the 8. So that was probably staring at me for a while there. Because with the palindrome and obviously 8 in the column, neither of these are the 8. Right, we should be able to finish this from here. So we still need to place 6. That's not a 6. That's the 6. That's the 1. That's the 2. That's a 9, 7. Nine, seven, nine, one, that's the five, six placed, that's the five, four, three, three, four. These will probably tell me something now. Uh, so the 3 cannot be over here where it sees the 7. So that's the 3. These are not 3. 1 or 2 could be either, but this one down here helps us. That's 2. That's 1. That's 2. That's 8. And if, not, if I've not made any mistakes, that's the 1. That's a fantastic puzzle, Tingo. Really, really enjoyed this. Well, I almost always enjoy puzzles where you don't necessarily know what the cells are until much later in, where it requires that sort of late break-in. But you can always just um, use logic to make you know, very sensible deductions about what the remaining things can be. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's puzzle. Um, please let me know how you got along in the comments down below, and see you all tomorrow.